So we were about a month in to COVID happening. Uh, so definitely we were very concerned about, you know, are we going to catch it? What does that look like as far as uh, hospital policies uh, going in? Um, so we just showed a lot of uh, concern. We really didn't know what to expect. Uh, just going through everything. Um, I was a little frightened myself just only because of uh, right when we got into the hospital, our temperature just needed to be checked. Um, we had to sanitize a yeah. lot. Yeah. So the fact that our family couldn't be there, that was one uh, concern because with our other two children, we were used to having family being there in the waiting room. And this is an exciting time, but having a baby going through all of this, Again, we just really didn't know what to expect. Um, as far as concerns regarding medical procedures in the hospital during the pandemic, I think, you know, we were just thinking about, number one, let's just make sure that we have a healthy baby. Handling um, social distancing during pregnancy, I think, was just is it was hard. I was um, already eight months pregnant when, you know, basically the U.S. and the world shut down. So that March and we delivered him in April. So we had been in contact with, you know, a lot of people. I was working. I was actually traveling um, for work. And so then to just be secluded home was right. very new for us because right. we have you know, friends and, and family here. And so, and a great social support. Yeah. So I, I wasn't even able to have a baby shower. So we had my baby shower virtually, which, which was new because I'm used to having a baby shower and, and having that. So we, we followed the guidelines. We, right. um, we did not have people come in our house. We, you know, ordered groceries online. We were very, um, top notch to follow what the CDC guidelines were. And everything with the shift, it was just a challenge from just day to day. Um, some, of, some of the simple things like just being able to shake somebody's hand, that was a challenge knowing that we had to just keep that distance from other people because at this time it was at an all time high. Uh, we were just finding people around us, their family members were catching it. So, um, as she said before, we were just taking that very seriously. And then as far as just uh, working with your children through all of this, uh, it does take a village. Not being able to um, get help from uh, sitters, you know, us being at home, the family all together. Um, I work from home normally, so I, that was an adjustment even for me, just mm -hmm. getting used to everyone being at home uh, all at once. She's working. Uh, the kids, they're doing e-learning. So um, we had a good support system as far as things that we've done virtually that we implemented with the kids' education. Uh, they're in tutoring two times a week. Uh, and so it's just been great just seeing that adjustment and just seeing how they adjusted as well. Yeah, I think, you know, we had to really, our family schedule had to change, right? Like we had to get our schedule had to change. So not just having a newborn home, how do we have to make sure that the educational needs of our three-year-old and our six-year-old still being met at the same time? So we had to figure out who was going to work. Okay, so is someone going to get up early in the morning and work while the kids sleep? And then who's going to do breakfast? And then who's going to do the six-year-old Zoom class or Google Classroom? And then who's going to work with the three-year-old to make sure he's still getting the things <laughs> that he needs? While, okay, well, I still have five meetings that I need to take via Teams meeting. And so it took a lot of coordination. So first thinking about, okay, we're, we're going to have to, you know, making the decision to keep our child home was hard because we're like, you know, we have a, a infant and he's a high risk. So how do we keep him at home, keep mm -hmm. him safe? And knowing that we had a three-year-old who touches everything and puts everything in his mouth increases the risk of him getting it potentially. So it wouldn't been fair to send the oldest one and the three-year-old was home. So we had to make a lot of trade-offs to think about how the right. education was going to look. Um, 
and I would say right now they're thriving. We're we're making it work. We're making adjustments, still keeping them at home um, through the through their school systems and um, really. But we had to make an adjustment, like he said, like get tutoring, get additional support to help with that education of the older children. Um, major changes that we've made since being parents in a pandemic, I think is really limiting the engagement that we have with others. Um, so we'll think about, we stay really close with our family, but outside of that, we'll go to some events, but you know, mask on, really talking about social dis physical distancing, um, making sure we're washing our hands when we come back home. I'm um, limiting the exposure of individuals that we have around the baby. So mm -hmm. we really, you know, we might be invited to a party, but it might just be one parent and one child that goes. So we have just drastically changed how we've, um, engaged we haven't put our kids back into sports yet we're we're thinking about that or recreational activities we'll see i think right now we're just trying to make sure that we keep our children safe Absolutely. and our um, family safe so we are just taking those precautions so i really think that um the p pandemic has changed our outlook on how we're parenting um even how we're communicating with our kids um, in light of that, I would say that we've spent a great amount of family time together right. and we've, right. our, our bond has gotten stronger. We've been able to really hone in on some values that mean a lot to us. Right. So given that we're in this situation, we've been able to think about what are some positive aspects that we can continue to um, talk to our kids about and how we communicate with them during this time. The additional parenting challenges that we project um, to occur to really see how we um, facilitate our older kids going back into the school system, um, how will we have that communication with them, and then what will it be like for our newborn to be around other kids. So I think that's one thing that we really see is how do we um, do that as far as educational, and then how do we also allow them to safely be around um, kids their age so they can have that emotional support and growth as well. So I think those are some things that we project um, to really see. And then I think lastly is what does a vaccine look like? Um, you know, when you think about a vaccine, there's a lot of other things that you have to put into considerations. Absolutely. And so knowing that a lot of vaccines will be very new, we won't have enough data to really understand what could be some of the side effects and what and how old um, a child would have to be to get the vaccine. So I think those are some things that we project to have serious conversations around um, as those things continue to move forward. We walk out the door, everyone is wearing masks and or if we've been in some cases where people haven't been wearing masks when they should. So uh, definitely that's all that's been a big adjustment is just getting used to that and just even knowing our own kids, how they are. Uh, just being able to tolerate wearing a mask all day, that kind of led to our decision on just making sure uh, we do homeschool because, you know, between a six-year-old and a three-year-old, you know, them wearing a mask eight hours a day, we just knew already, like, yeah. homeschool was the way to go for us. And just seeing that how well they're thriving mm -hmm. uh, with our six-year-old, we're just seeing, I mean, major adjustments with him. Like, he's being a little bit more independent now. Um, he's more responsible. Yep. Uh, we've had our ups and downs with it, just mm -hmm. trying to balance out uh, my time versus her time, and um, and our time. Yeah, and our time <laughs> together. Together. So, but as a family, we feel like we've grown. Uh, I believe we set expectations for the kids that they abide by. So, through it all, we've just been blessed beyond beyond blessed. Yeah, most, most definitely. Yeah. We had to define what we were going to follow and then surround ourselves around um, a support system who were going to follow the same rules. Um, that was very important to us. So that was one advice is figure out what is your plan going to be at home and then be comfortable in that and stand right. by it and communicate that to your others that is a part of your support system because a lot of times other individuals can bring their ideals on you and make you almost feel like a sort of peer pressure that you have to do it their way. Well, we um, 
put on a magic show with our six-year-old and our three-year-old for our families to do something different. Right. Um, so get creative. Find ways. I did um, Family Feud Bingo, Family Feud for my baby shower. That was fun through Zoom. So, you know, sometimes it's not the ideal experience that we would want. But find ways to get creative and still have fun and still find ways that can make life more meaningful and joyful throughout these difficult times. Definitely. And also to add to that, consistency. You know, we were very consistent with procedures. If we were happen to be out, whether it's getting groceries, whether it was coming in from um, just anywhere, you know, just making sure we're taking those necessary precautions, coming in, washing our hands get into the habit of singing happy birthday two times while we wash our hands, <laughs> being able to uh, change into other clothes when we come in. Uh, that way we can just make sure we're doing what we need to do just to make sure we keep our families safe. Uh, so consistency and communication yes. to us, th those are the biggest things. I was pretty fine with the limited socialization. Well, um, I definitely think that an uh, important that a support system is important. Um, I think it's just taking necessary precautions, having the hand sanitizer, um, you know, washing your hands regularly, um, and and just being aware of <clears throat> who you're letting around your child and who you're letting in the house and um, just whose house you're going over. Um, and I feel like as long as you, you know, your family, so you know, their, their hygiene habits or cleanliness. So at know. least you hope you do. Yeah. So I'm not like over the top, like, Oh, you know, being extravagant and dramatic about things, but just common sense mm -hmm. and, um, sanitation. How is the world going to work now, you know? Um, and it's not really a concern factor. It's just more of an interest in just to kind of see how it plays out. Um, just kind of interested in what kind of world is Samara, our daughter, going to grow up in as opposed to what kind of world I grew up in. You know, we dealt with Y2K. We dealt with different things. Um, but obviously not, nobody's dealt with anything like this. So it would be interesting to see the... Um, aftermath, I guess you can say, of uh, COVID-19. Well, definitely a major change that I've had since the pandemic is homeschooling. So um, a lot of my time is being um, consumed with homeschooling where it wasn't before. And... Um, wearing mask when we go outside. Um, that's a little irritating because you, you get out the car, you walk up to the door and you're like, dang it, forgot my mask. And you have to turn back around and go get your mask and then go in or decide, forget it. It's not that important. I'm going home. Or you forgot it at home. <laughs> right. Or you forgot it at home. So, um, doing a lot of Zoom videos conferences conference calls like everything is through zoom now which hasn't really been bad because i took a few trainings through zoom and probably otherwise wouldn't have been able to do those trainings so soon but um so that's awesome i would probably piggyback off of that um i do a lot of work through zoom um so and i work from home a lot already um but as far as um uh, with the pandemic and the parenting, um, I would probably just kind of piggyback off of you and just kind of say um, the mask. I mean, obviously understanding the importance of them, uh, but just that alone um, is, is basically, it's, it's not just girls, have you gone to the bathroom? Have you done this? Have you that? Do you have your mask? Because we don't want to drive back home. Because if we drive back home, we probably won't drive back out. We probably just stay home, try again tomorrow. So it's just kind of like those different things that, and then it, it's gotten to the point where now you have to have your mask in the store. And so, you know, you, you, you know, you really need to make sure that that's part of your checklist, leaving the house and different things that are, are changing like that. And like my wife says, to, for us, it's, it's just kind of been more of an, an annoyance. Understanding the importance, but still just a personal um, uh, 
feeling towards it. It's just kind of been more like, oh, man, like, you know. So, yeah. Hi, my name is Victoria Jackson. Hey, my name is Marcus Jackson. I don't see anything outside of the norm. I would add to that outside of what's already occurred, and especially this new norm. I would even add to that outside of this new norm. I don't really see, especially at the age of an infant, anything really affecting her um, that I guess you could say is is going to be overbearing, overwhelming, or anything like that. Because I mean, other than like the mask don't affect her; she doesn't have to wear one. You know, different things like that. Um, the only thing that would affect her is our schedule. You know, and so whatever affects us is going to trickle down and affect her. And so it's those type of things that affect us as parents. And then we'll see how that affects her. So. Well said. Thank you. You have a grass hopper. Is that what I mean? <laughs> I, do what I, I do what I can and I can what I do. I do what I can and I can what I do. I wish Crystal was down here. If Golly says I want to be a writer, then I better start now. What the shirt? That's Harry the Spy. And then, what was your overall experience with the pandemic and adjusting to the new way of parenting? Um, um, I think it was just that. It was just an adjustment. Um, just moving responsibilities around. Um, I don't think that um, it was too overwhelming um i think that I, we've i mean everyone's having different experiences but um as far as the pandemic and, and my experience or our experience it's we've been you know pretty fortunate so um you know it's just been a little bit of adjusting and moving some things around um but it hasn't been anything too strenuous or stressful or um anything like that and so we bless god mm -hmm. Lord bless him. What the? <laughs> What's going on? Looking like a raging rabbit. <laughs> what is that? What was that? I don't know what that is, bro. A raven rabbit? A rabbit? 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 Raven rabbit. rabbit. Why would you do that? Why would you put your hand in my face? Why would you put your hand in my face? On national TV. Well, Jonah, are you make are you are, is this national TV? Oh wow. What is that? <laughs> a raven rabbit. But what is that from? It's a video game from um That's what I look like. Childhood. Like when you like oh my just God. all just all tea, like ew. Why? Yes, we are. Cool. Uh, let's see here. What advice would you give to other parents about approaches to <coughs> coping during the pandemic? And this one shoots for Marcus first. New parents during the pandemic would be, um, I think you need a strong support um, system as well. Even if, obviously, with the pandemic, they may not, I mean, depending on families, have different... Um, levels of health concerns, but you might not be able to be as physically close, but there's still the communication and the advice uh, nowadays, um, especially if you're a new parent, um, a strong support system, um, because things are not going to be the same as a hospital. Things are not going to be the same, but probably once you come home as they, were, they may have been. And so I think that that's, that's very important. Um, and then ultimately, whatever your, your values are, um, even through this pandemic, I mean, I, I don't believe they should change. I mean, obviously the pandemic, uh, 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 re readjusted some things in your life, but ultimately your core values, if they're, they're core values for a reason. And so ultimately um, they might get hit a little bit or beat up or whatever, but ultimately I think that they, sh they should stand. And so I think those two things would be the things that I, I would lean on if um, someone was giving me advice. Uh, that's the things that I would, I would take to heart. 
Um, I would just, I would agree with uh, Marcus. Uh, I think it's important to um, get some level of consistency um, and uh, get a new, a new um, routine um, with your, within your adjustments. Just get used to what's new and um, keep your faith and continue to look to God from which comes your help.